Thanks for being here. Hi, everyone. Just give me a moment. I'm trying to switch back to gallery. Here we go. So I can see, I can see all your wonderful faces. Um, I will say thank you. Thank you to Coral and Twinkle, who I, both of whom I've not seen and heard in a little while. So it's also just nice to uh, be back in that presence. And they've both been super supportive, super generous folks in my life. So yeah, thank you for having me back again. Uh, I actually haven't taught in a little while. So this has been an interesting experience to be like, all right, what's that like? Uh, what I will do maybe just to get us started as a quick check in, it's helpful for me to what I would say sort of just get a temperature or feel for how y'all are doing. Uh, if you feel comfortable sharing in the chat, either in the group chat, or you could share it uh, with me or Coral and we could read it out. Um, one thing that's giving you joy today. Yes, F furry ones have a habit of doing that, as do little humans in our lives, uh, especially swimming with them. I can see that, yeah. New apartment, yes. <laughs> yes, may it be a beautiful nourishing home, yeah. Mm. Yes, and friends, dear friends, yeah. Thank you. And then for the other end of the spectrum, uh, what is one thing that's giving you despair or causing a little heartbreak today? Or a lot of heartbreak. There's no no limit to the heartbreak. Mm. Oh, goodness, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah, thank you all for sharing. Yes, Luca and all its forms, the loss of loved ones, and for those who are where the, you know, the mourning is, um, to me, death is just, yeah, is one of the, gnarlier forms of the curse of just holding Dominique holding your mom in my heart uh, Erica holding your kitty may they both be well or may they both need whatever may they both have whatever they may need on the other side and yes bodies and healthcare and bureaucracy thank you to go for saying that yes bureaucracy <laughs> I will, I might name something that, uh, yeah, we'll, we can circle back to the bureaucracy piece. Um, yeah, and just the general state of the world. Um, yeah, so thank you for sharing both the ends of that spectrum. And it's just helpful for me to get a feel for where folks are at before we dive in. Uh, I'll take a moment, I'm gonna share a gratitude prayer as a way of just grounding us and sort of formally opening our time together. Uh, this is, it's inspired by uh, Haudenosaunee, so most of you may be familiar, so this is the Five Nation Confederacy. Um, and so it's their, their gratitude prayer is, you know, that lasts four days. So this is clearly a very, very shortened, edited version of that. And so just take a moment, you just come into a comfortable position for the body. And you can be seated, standing, laying down, whatever feels nourishing in this moment. It takes, I think it takes maybe two or three minutes. It's not very long. 
And the invitation is to just receive the words. So I almost feel like the this prayer, this um, speaking, it's sort of like a waterfall or rain falling from the sky and just, you know, let it wash over the body. And some of it may feel good, some of it may not feel good. Just notice what happens in the body as you receive the words. And your eyes could be open or closed, half shut. Again, just find what's nourishing for your body and nervous system in this moment. We express our gratitude to the earth, mother of all greetings and thanks. We send thanks to the air for filling us up, giving us breath, and connecting us to other living beings. We send thanks to the streams, the lakes, the oceans, to all the waters for cleansing us inside and out, for giving us life, and for showing us the nature of flow. We send thanks to the sun for light and warmth for each new day and for all the fires of life. We send thanks to the birds for telling us the coming and doing of the days and the seasons and for showing us the natural abundance and diversity of the world. We send thanks to all the fish for showing us how to swim with the flow of the stream and when to swim upstream against the structures that oppress us so we can come home to liberation. We send thanks to all our animal companions for feeding and clothing some of us, for teaching us the lessons of life, We send thanks to plants, to food plants, to grains, to berries, to fruits, vegetables. We send thanks to all food plants for nourishing us on our journeys. We send thanks to medicine plants and their keepers for guiding us on those journeys. We send thanks to the flowers for showing us that beauty and survival are but one and the same, and that we can carry life's 10,000 joys and sorrows with grace. We send thanks to the trees for showing us how to be strong and resilient, for showing us how to love each unique individual, and for telling us the messages of the wind. We send thanks to the wind for bringing us change, making us strong, and reminding us that the whole earth breathes. We send thanks to our oldest grandmother, the moon, for teaching us that life has its phases, waxing and waning, building and resting, living and dying. And we send thanks to all our other ancestors in the skies, the thunderers, for reminding us that when our burdens are too heavy, we can feel the thunder of our anger and we can let our tears fall. We send thanks to the stars and the planets for their influence and guidance. And we send thanks to our teachers through all of time. We send thanks to each other as people. And for anything that we've forgotten to thank, we remember.
So just allow that to move through the body, move through the mind. And we don't have to hold on to any part of it. And then taking your time, we'll come back in for our sharing and discussion here. And again, keeping in mind for the rest of our time together, you know, whatever is a comfortable position for your body, what helps your nervous system stay regulated, so you're moving the body as you might need, turning on or off your screen as you might need. So you all may have seen that um, part of the premise for today is to talk about sort of beauty and ritual and mindfulness. And uh, this is coming more from uh, just an exploration that's been going on for me for the past little while. And so I'm I'm sharing with you from the midst of the exploration. So it's more of a um a co-exploration. And so I'll share, I'll sort of share a little bit about how this started. Uh, and then I I'm hoping I can share a couple of videos with you. Maybe we'll see how that goes. So anyhow, I was doing an online retreat. Uh, I think it was, I'm not sure, it was 2020, 2021, somewhere in there, with uh, a teacher that some of you may know, Ajahn Suchito. He's a he's a monk. The British monk in his 80s, uh, a phenomenal teacher, if you ask me. It was a three or four day retreat. And on the last day, it might have been the last session, I can't remember. Uh, it was a question and response time. And one of the other participants asked this question. I won't remember exactly how they worded it, but essentially their question was, you know, given the state of the world, all the dukkha, all the chaos, etc. What do you do when you wake up in the morning and you're like, what's the point? And Ajahn's response was, he said, you get out of bed and you make the bed with beauty. You walk out of your room, you walk out of the room with beauty. That's all. That's all he said. <laughs> and I didn't realize it at the time, but for me at least, it's probably, it's definitely in the top three, like, dharma instructions I've probably got, <laughs> uh, where it's such a simple instruction, and yet there, there's there's a lot to it. One of my other teachers, who you all may know, I think he's come and shared with you, Sean Fate Oaks. Sean, when I shared it with Sean, Sean said, oh, that's such a, you know, brief and succinct invitation to mindfulness. Like, yes, just you got to make the bed. You make the bed with beauty. More recently, so just in the past couple of months, this video came into my feed somehow. And so I want to share this with you in this theme of what does it mean to make beauty and especially what does it mean to make a bed <laughs> with beauty. So let me see. Coral, I should have checked with you. I think I should be able to share screen, I think. Okay. So bear with me while I figure out. Yes, okay. Um, Here we go. Okay. And you all, you all can see the, yes, okay. And I don't know if the sound will come through or not. Hopefully it'll come through. Um, no, that's not what I want because then I can't see. Okay, here we go.
Oops. So I'd be curious um, if you're willing again in the chat to put in, was there anything in particular that you, you know, when you're like, oh yeah, make a bed, make it with beauty. And you're like, oh my, that's, that's, I see how this is done with beauty. If there's anything that struck you, uh, I can share that. I've seen that video a few times and each time I'm impressed with how this body moves like they're so careful they don't bend over they always bend from their hips and I'm like yes why don't I remember to do that when I'm making the bed so I don't hurt my own back um or the this time around you know the duvet cover is in and it's just that one flick I'm like how many times did you have to practice this flick so that the duvet cover just goes down you know it's one flat you know sweep so Anyhow, yes, I'd be curious, uh, anything that came up for you, where you so anything that struck you where you were like, wow, that's okay, that's something. Yeah, flow, state of mind. Yes, dedication to craft, no kidding, right? I'm like, how many hours of practice did this take? Yeah, <laughs> I suspect this was not beginner's luck or one time luck. Yeah, I don't think I've had it happen even a single time. <laughs> yeah calmly rushed i feel that too where there's there's this part where this person right walks from one end of the bed to the other and they're clearly you know pushed for times up but their steps are so little they're still like running but they're not running <laughs> um yeah calmly rushed I'll, I'll circle back to the calmly rushed as well. Feel free to continue sharing in that thread. I'd also be curious if there was anything that sort of rubbed you the wrong way, where you were like, oh, why, why does that have to be the standard for bed making or the standard for a beautiful bed? Yes, another. Yeah. I can't even make my bed properly. Yes, yeah. I I can hear that. I, as I was coming over to join you all, there's I have a, a sort of like a duvet, and then I have another cover on my bed because my my canine companion sleeps on the bed and sheds a fair bit, so there's an extra cover on there. But I can see the duvet cover sort of sticking out from the other, and I was like, it's fine, it's fine. It's just yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, they really wanted the corners to be tucked in. I know. I I go back and forth where I'm like, hmm, there's something about the, like, do they starch it or something? Like, how does it keep these perfect corners? But I'm also like, yeah, something about it doesn't feel very inviting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, so then since I went down this rabbit hole, actually, this is not true. I think this also came into my feed. So bear with me. We're going to watch some more bed making. <laughs> this one, I think, will hopefully make you chuckle a little bit. Let me see. Give me a moment here. It takes a moment to pull up. Okay. Can you all see that? Yeah, okay, here we go. Sound.
Okay. All right. I promise that's, that's the last of my video sharing. <laughs> uh, yeah, same thing. I'd be curious. Uh, and feel free to unmute yourself and share or to put into the chat. What was it that you saw and you're like, you know, that's that, that warmed your heart and like, yeah, you know what? I could sign up for that kind of beauty. And yeah, let's start there. Yes, actually, that's my favorite too, the teddy bear. <laughs> I'm like, yes, may it be so. May we have our teddy bears when we're going to bed. And the fact that it's like the pulling of the teddy bear switches the light off, great. <laughs> Snuggle in so that the lights can get in. Yeah, the creative, I'd say like it's some creative genius, right? I think one of the one of the comments on Instagram is, your unemployed in engineering friend one Monday morning. <laughs> um, Pee Wee Herman's house, yes. <laughs> yeah, satisfying in a different way. Mm, satisfying, that's a good word, yes. Yeah. Mm. And then similarly, the other end of the spectrum, right? Was there anything that sort of you're like, ah, really? Or like made you roll your eyes or something like that? Or was like, yeah, I don't know if I really want to sign up for that kind of bed making. The automation, yeah, and the chaotic, it's, um, I'm always struck by how the sounds of the process feel very different for me in the first video. I mean, of course, the first video is rather quiet because it's a competition, but yeah, the second one is sort of, it's a, sort of like loud and a little jarring, right, to the thuds of things, yeah, the automation. Well, feel free to keep sharing. So I'm gonna um I'll say um let me share a couple of things. And so I think I mentioned, right? So for me it's sort of like how the body in the first video, right? Just that the attention to how the body is moving. And so there's a there's a sort of presence in the body. Right, or just uh, this, also just the practice of like make, doing this movement again and again. And it reminds me of one of my movement teachers who, when I first started learning with him, English is not his first language. And so he would teach, you know, he'd teach sort of a sequence of movements. And when we'd practice it together, he'd say, okay, let's make the movement. And I would, my immediate sort of thing was like, oh, I think it's, because English isn't his first language, instead of saying, oh, let's do the gesture or do the practice, he's saying, make the gesture, make the practice. I don't know. I've never asked him. But as time has gone on, I'm like, oh, no, he's right. You're making it. You're not doing it. You're making it, right? And so, of course, in, you know, if we go back to Ajahn's direction or instruction of like, okay, you wake up and you're like, what's the point? You make the bed with beauty. What does... In a way, it's such a simple instruction. And in a way, it's like, well, but what does that mean? <laughs> right? What do we mean by beauty here? And so I just pulled up a couple of quotes that for me, as I sort of think about like, well, okay, well, what does this mean? A couple of quotes that I have found useful. Okay. Excuse me. This is from Jake Skeets, who's a, he's a Navajo Dene author. Jake writes, beauty is often interpreted as utopian, but beauty is actually the progression of one's life. It's the way we move through the world. It's the dinners we cook, the way we scrounge for our transit pass, the asymmetry of our faces, the way we stretch, the tears, the way we take deep breaths. 
It's the becoming we do, the emerging, the arriving. In a way, naming ourselves in beauty, for beauty, and about beauty recenters the self. We unburden ourselves of utopia and call the way we move through the world utopia. We ooze beauty. There, there's so many parts of this that I love, right? Like the way we scrounge for our transit pass. I, for me, I know that that's probably the one I find hardest to do beautifully. <laughs> um, and this, it's the becoming we do, the emerging, the arriving. And we unburden ourselves of utopia and call the way we move through the world utopia. And oozing beauty, right? Like what would it mean to, in a way that sort of, Ajahn's invitation, right? So he's like, yep, given the state of the world, the thing you can do is ooze beauty. Um, I'll share, just do a quick time check here. Um, yeah, I'll share both of these. So this one is from John O'Donohue, who's a Celtic uh, author. John wrote, Beauty isn't all about just nice loveliness. Beauty is about more rounded, substantial becoming. So I think beauty in that sense is about an emerging fullness, a greater sense of grace and elegance, a deeper sense of depth, and also a kind of homecoming for the enriched memory of your unfolding life. A kind of homecoming for the enriched memory of our unfolding lives. The unfolding life for me like echoes with what Jake shares, right? It's like, yeah, the scrunching for the transit pass, the dinners we cook. Mm -hmm. I'll share one more here. This is from uh, J.K. Krishnamurti, who I would describe sort of as a philosopher, Indian philosopher in the 20th century. Uh, he wrote, here we go, without love, your daily life has no meaning. And you cannot have love if there is no beauty. There is beauty only when your heart and mind know what love is. Without love in that sense of beauty, there is no virtue. And you know very well that do what you will, improve society, feed the poor, you will only be creating more mischief. For without love, there is only ugliness and poverty in your own heart and minds. But when there is love and beauty, whatever you do is right. Whatever you do is in order. If you know how to love, then you can do what you love. Then you can do what you like because it will solve all other problems. And so, you know, of course, I think most of us would agree that this instruction to do it with beauty, right? The, the, the beauty piece isn't about the aesthetic of something per se, right? But it's this sort of felt sense is there this felt sense of love and that it's actually in a way even what is being done doesn't matter right that uh, I think most of us have probably at some point experienced right someone uh, an, an activity or action which on the surface is like oh this is a good thing to be doing but the way it's being done sort of you're like oh no thanks <laughs> You can keep please keep your help your help and your good intentions. Uh yeah. So this right, so whatever it is we're doing, it can be the simplest thing. But if it's being done with beauty and love, then it's worth doing. So I the way part of sometimes the way I think about it is sort of the so it's a felt sense, right? So if I if I walk into a room does it sort of help me feel, you know, I might describe it as lighter in my heart and mind, or does it, does it make me feel welcome? Does it make me feel calmer or something like that, right? And so it's a felt sense. It's something that's, it's, you know, in my body, in my mind, there's something that happens that sort of gives this feedback of like, oh, this is beautiful. I can feel the beauty. I can feel the love. The other way that for me sometimes I'm like, okay, if I want to check, well, is this is this in beauty or not, is sort of the uh, what I would call like the energetic trace that something leaves, right? So if the 
in the thought we have, or the words we're speaking, or the actions we're making, is there something about it that invites beauty into the world or for somebody else as well, right? And so that might be, um, this is sort of a more benign example, right? But if I put flowers, if I cut some flowers and put them at the entrance to the house I live in, what's that, what effect might that have on anybody who comes to the door, right? What effect might that have and, you know, to the animals, et cetera, et cetera. So this, that energetic trace, and even though that it may feel like a small thing, sometimes we may not even know what that energetic trace is, but it's um, there's a there's a way in which it sort of reverberates, right? And so it's I'm thinking of the right with the like chaos theory, right? A, a butterfly fluttering its wings in one place, causing a typhoon or a um, a tornado somewhere else. It's sort of similar, <laughs> where we don't know what the the flapping of butterfly wings we're doing and how that's going to reverberate through. So we'll do, let's take a moment. So because we're talking about this thing of beauty and love as a felt thing, as an energetic trace. And for those of you who are familiar with Brahma Vihar practice, so Brahma Vihar is, um, right, so metta, loving kindness, karuna, compassion, uh, mudita, um, I'm forgetting the English translation, but appreciative joy, joy in, in someone else's happiness and opeka, equanimity, there, there's a little bit of overlap here. So if you've done any of those practices, you might feel that here. And so it'll just be a quick, it'll just be a few minutes. And so again, find a comfortable position for your body, maybe four or five minutes, we won't be here very long. And doing whatever you need to, to get the body to just settle and be present for these few moments. And again, you can be seated, laying down, standing, eyes can be open or closed. And what we're going to do is bring to mind something. So it could be the visual of something, it could be the memory of the sound of something, right? So we're going to bring to mind some experience that brings up this felt sense of beauty and love in our mind and body. And so for the experiences, I'll name a few as examples, and that might help you think of something that's relevant for your own life or experience. Right, so as we think of these experiences that might invite beauty and love into our lives. So for me, where I am right now, the flowers are, they're really blooming. And there are times where I walk some past someone's house and it's sort of, you know, it takes your breath away. Like, oh my gosh, look at that beautiful lily or that rose. Or the smell, right, when you've walked past already, but there's the smell lingers. It could be for those of us who have, <clears throat> you know, furry or any animals in our lives, right? It could be the image of their face. Maybe there's a particular uh, antic they have that makes us smile or laugh. Maybe it's a loved one, a little human in our lives, our partner, sibling, a parent. There might be something, again, like maybe it's when they smile, maybe it's when, again, a particular behavior they have. For me, there's one or two friends who their their laugh, there's something about their laugh that just invites an openness. It could be a piece of music. Maybe there's some, you know, particular part of a song you like that again where it's just like when you hear it there's something where it just automatically invites this opening in the body so just take a moment hopefully you found some sort of experience here just identify one that you can work with for this time 
And there's no right or wrong experience here, right? It's the one that works for you. And once you've picked your experience, just hold that, you know, keep that in your, the sort of the center of your mind, in your focus. And as you hold it, notice what's happening in the body. And this will, again, it'll show up in different ways for each one of us. I'll just name some ways that perhaps it might show up. So just check in with your own body to see what is it that shifts so that then we can start to recognize, ah, okay, I'm feeling there's the, the presence of love and beauty is here and this is how my body registers it. So for me, most often, it tends to show up in the chest. There's sort of an opening in the chest, almost a tingling, um, prickly, uh, prickly almost, I would say, like a prickly tingling. It might show up in the cheeks and the jaw, right? So in, this, in the way that a smile shows up on the face, you might feel it in the cheeks, or maybe even around the eyes. Some of us might feel it in the shoulders, where actually the body releases tension and relaxes when there's beauty and love present. Some of us might feel it in the belly, if there's again sort of like a tingliness, maybe almost like an excitement. Uh, some, of it, some of us might feel it maybe in our fingertips or hands. It might be a warmth in the center of the hands. And so I'm just naming a few possibilities. And so again, just take a moment to keep that experience in your mind. And then check in with your own body. Where is it that you notice, ah, this is how my body feels, or this is how my body responds when it's feeling beauty and love. Once you have a sense of that, perhaps also check in with the mind. What is the quality of the mind? Right, And that may just be a sense of, does the mind feel more still, more calm, more open perhaps, more at ease? Again, there's no, there's no right or wrong. We're just trying to this is a toolkit for ourselves, so then we know, ah, okay, this is when I feel this, that's how it is. We'll take a couple more moments here. And the invitation is just to, you know, make a note for ourselves. But this is how the body feels or this is how the mind feels. And so then we know when we're out and about, when we notice those things show up in the body or the mind, we know, okay, we're in the presence of beauty and love. Or when we're doing something and we need to check, am I doing it in beauty and love? Check in with the body, check in with the mind. Are they, are they giving those signals? And so take your time here. We'll, I'll, well, actually, I'll read a poem. So you're welcome to let the words of the poem wash through the body as you are. If you want to open your eyes or change your posture, come back to the screen. You're welcome to do that too. It's The poem is The Patience of Ordinary Things by Pat Schneider. It is a kind of love, is it not? How the cup holds the tea. How the chair stands sturdy and foursquare. How the floor receives the bottoms of shoes or toes. How soles of feet know where they're supposed to be. 
I've been thinking about the patience of ordinary things, how clothes wait respectfully in closets and soap dries quietly in the dish and towels drink the wet from the skin of the back and the lovely repetition of stairs. And what is more generous than a window? I'll, just, I'll share a couple more thoughts. Um, there's there's so many things I would love to share. So give me a moment as I think about what would be useful here. I think one thing I want to say is, um, for me at least, where it's like, okay, make the bed with beauty or this, or what Jake Skeets described, right? Where it's everything. It's the asymmetry of the face, the scrounging for the transit pass. Uh, that it's also an invitation to make every part of life, even what seems mundane, into a ritual. Right? So when we bring it, our when we bring any activity, our sort of full presence, or that presence of beauty and love, it is in a way sort of making it a ritual. And for me, at least, that has felt quite important since uh, there's a way in which ritual is almost being... Um, Ritual is sort of a bad thing, right? <laughs> Where it's uh, it's the thing that gets washed out. Some might argue that's the difference between religion and spirituality. Uh, for those of us, right, where in a Buddhist setting, rituals are sort of culture specific, right? So what does it mean if we're emerging into a Western Buddhism here? What are our rituals here? How do we create those? Um, I'll say the other piece I wanted to say here is also that so it's a ritual and in the ritual so because it's a ritual one is we are it's a gift or an offering right so this making of beauty this creating of beauty Sometimes it's a gift and offering to ourselves, right? So the making of the bed, what a gift to myself, to my tired self at the end of the day to crawl into a nicely made bed. Um, it's a gift and offering to the bed. And when I get out of bed, it can be a form of gratitude, right? Well, thank you, dear bed, for holding my body, for giving me some rest. Uh, but also that these these gifts and offerings when we if we're able to move through with that sense of beauty and ritual it's also gifts and offerings for others right so again so this is coming back to that piece of the energetic trace if i'm doing things with beauty if i'm moving with beauty it's it's um it's adding beauty and love to others lives as well i'm going to read a, this is from francis wheeler he describes Ritual is the original art form, weaving the personal and the communal in ways that help us relate directly with the larger unseen world. So ritual is the original art form, weaving the personal and the communal in ways that help us relate directly with the larger unseen world. I'll share one other piece here. So in that, you know, if you remember from that anecdote I shared from the retreat where this, the other participant was asking, you know, given the state, I think their question was specifically in relation to climate change. But just, you know, we can pick our flavor of dukkha, or the thing that's breaking our heart, or the thing that feels like overwhelming despair that we wake up in the morning and we're like, what's the point? There's um, the gift and offering of beauty is also uh, it's mysterious, right? So I'll I'll share. This is from uh, Martin Prechtel, who's uh, if you're he, he's a very interesting character in and of himself. But anyhow, he without getting into it too much, he's very very familiar with uh, Mayan 
traditions and he writes a lot about Mayan traditions. But here's an excerpt from him. He says, in a sense, all of us, even the most untechnological, spiritual and benign peoples, are constantly wrecking the world. The question is, how do we respond to that destruction? If we respond as we do in modern, cult in modern culture, by ignoring the spiritual debt that we create just by living, then that debt will come back to bite us hard. But there are other ways to respond. One is to try to repay that debt by giving gifts of beauty and praise to the sacred, to the invisible world that gives us life. Right? And so this, the, this weird, mysterious experience of life as a human I can't, there's a way in which it's like, I can't actually repay the debt. How on earth could I ever repay the debt? But what I can do is make these offerings of beauty, right? Where it's like, okay, I have this life, I have this day. What I can do is move through it with beauty as I do these mundane, even what might seem like mundane tasks with beauty. I do them as offerings, I offer them up. Let's share one last piece here then. Um, Beauty as resistance, right? So yes, in a world that's overwhelming and that, you know, we wake up and you're like, what's the point? We're just like, no, beauty then is the thing that makes sure we keep going. Beauty is resistance. I didn't, I don't want to get into too much here, but I love Twinkle that you said bureaucracy right at the start because there's a, there's a group I follow who does like post-capitalist philanthropy. They talk about like some of the shifts that need to happen in our ways of thinking. And they, they name several things, right? Like, you know, we historical amnesia to uh, accounting for harm that has been done and reparations, et cetera. They have a whole long list. But on that list, one of the things is we need to move from bureaucracy to beauty. Because <laughs> it's like, yes, y'all, like, it's really hard to do bureaucracy with beauty. I'm just going to say, like, you know, can no, it's, it's, it's hard. Um. But yeah, so beauty is resistance. So I'll, I'll share one more um, quote here and an anecdote. This is from Ron Rollheiser. Beauty then has an immense power to transform us, to call us back from woundedness, tiredness, and despair, to health, enthusiasm, and gratitude. Like love, it softens the heart and invites one out of oneself. Moreover, perhaps even more so than love, it is what reminds us, as Merton once said, that we are all walking around shining like the sun. Yeah, to call us back from woundedness, tiredness, and despair, to health, enthusiasm, and gratitude. So yeah, as we as we swim through this world, swim through the dukkha of the world, it's the thing that can keep us afloat. There's I like this all walking around shining like the sun. And uh, I'll share an anecdote, which I've only talked about two or three times. And each time I've talked about it, I've teared up. So we'll see how we do here. Uh, Y'all may have heard of this. I think it happened. I, I think it did happen this year. It happened a few months ago. I don't think it was last year. Uh, this is, it's in Gaza. And so as the, with the bombings and the shellings, there's a little girl who's being rescued from the rubble. And so the, the man who's rescuing her is sort of putting her into a wheelbarrow so he can get her out. And she opens her eyes and she's, she's a little confused, right? She, she doesn't quite understand what's going on. And so she's not sure where she is. And so I forget how she asked the question. I think she asks, am I dead? Right, so because she's she can't quite figure out what's going on. And so she asks, am I dead? And the man who's rescuing her, he says, he, he says, look at you, you're alive. Look at you, you're beautiful like the moon. And for me, at least, where it's like, that's like exemplar of like, do it with beauty, right? Like, yes, you're saving a little child from the rubble. Little child was... She, she's not even sure if she's dead or alive 
And it's like, not just like, yes, yes, honey, you're alive. But like, look at you. You're beautiful, like the moon. Yeah. Take your pick. If you want to be beautiful like the moon or walk around shining like the sun. <laughs> but yeah, to, to do it in beauty. I'll share a quick closing and then I, I hopefully we'll have a little time for those who can stay on uh, just to share more openly. Um, I will, so since I started with the Hodanishani gratitude prayer, I, I'd like to close with a, it's a Diné Navajo prayer uh, it's a, or a blessing. Uh, before I say the blessing itself, I will say this is Jake Skeets again. Uh, sort of giving a little more context to the blessing. He says, this blessing, of course, does have many functions within Diné traditions, prayers, and stories. While its meaning is more intentional in Diné, the idea remains cons consistent. Beauty exists, and we exist along with it. And that is an odd way to perceive the world when so many voices teach us to view the world through shadows. But what is shadow if not the language of light, and darkness the language of mourning, grief the language of time, body the language of earth, and beauty the language of the universe? And beauty is the language of the universe, just you know, reminds me of that what Martin Prechtel was saying that yes, we do this in beauty because the the beauty is the offering we make to try and repay the debt of the life we're living. So here's the here's the blessing. The the wording, you know, is a little ableist, so receive it and alter it as you might need. And for those who are familiar with Brahma Vihara practice, you might hear again this echo uh, of, of similarity here. In beauty I walk, with beauty before me I walk, with beauty behind me I walk. With beauty above me, I walk. With beauty all around me, I walk. With beauty within me, I walk. In beauty, it is finished. Thank you all um, for your beautiful presence and attention and the chance to explore some of this with you. Uh, I'll put into the chat as a, you know, the, a slightly more um, structured way to actually take this into life and to pick our mundane task or the scrounging for the transit pass and how to like pick one thing and work with it to make some beauty. Uh, and then, you know, for those who are able to stay, I'd, I'd love to just hear any questions, comments, reflections. Uh, let me get this um, 